So by learning these 3D effects, you will unlock a skill that most editors don't have. I'm gonna show you three levels of the basic 3D effect. And once you reach level three, you will be an unstoppable video editor. Level one, creating a beautiful 3D transition loop. Here are your logos. Make sure they are all the exact same length. Super important. Find the basic 3D effect in the effect browser and drag it on your first logo. Then also find the Gaussian blur effect and drag it on the same clip. Make sure it's selected and head over to the effect controls. Move the player to the first frame of the clip and in the basic 3D effect, set the swivel to minus 90. Then set a swivel keyframe. Now move further in time with your playhead and set the swivel back to zero. Select the last keyframe and press Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy it. Then move further in time and hit Ctrl plus V to paste it. Now nothing will happen in between those keyframes because they have the same swivel value. Now move to the end of the clip and set the swivel to 90. We're gonna make the animation smoother and to do that, expand the velocity curves. First, for the second keyframe, pull the lever to ease the animation in. Then on the third keyframe, pull the lever to ease the animation out. This will create this beautiful swivel animation. All right, now on the Gaussian blur effect, set the blur dimension to horizontal. Then move the player to the first frame of the clip and increase the blurriness to 100. Also click the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe. Move the player further in time to the same location of the second swivel keyframe. Right here, set the blurriness to zero because we wanted to end here. Now copy the keyframe again and paste it a little further in time, actually on the same spot as the third swivel keyframe. Then move to the last frame and set it back to 100. Now expand the velocity curves again and pull the lever of the second keyframe, then again pull the lever of the third keyframe. All right, we're 99% done. Next, go back to the timeline. Select the first clip and press Ctrl plus C to copy it. Then select the other clips and right click them. Choose paste attributes. You can also hit Ctrl plus Alt plus V to do this. We can now paste all the attributes from the first clip we just copied. Make sure the effects are selected in here and press OK. Now all these clips will work perfectly together. Look at that beautiful loop. Next I want to show you how to create this beautiful dynamic screen recording and how to make a 3D hologram. By the way, you can actually download 3D animations from the Storyblocks plugin without leaving Premiere. All you need to do is click the download button. Inside this plugin you will find thousands of pre-made professional video templates both for Premiere, After Effects, but also Apple Motion and DaVinci Resolve. This plugin is from Starblocks. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. Now, besides templates, you can download unlimited stock assets that will help you tell your story so much better. Starblocks curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images, and more, you can download unlimited high quality assets for just one predictable subscription cost, monthly or annually. You don't have to pay expensive prices per clip that you want to download ever again. Enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label music tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Storyblocks will always keep you legally covered and protected against copyright strikes or anything like that. That way you can actually focus on creating and not wasting your time on figuring out these legal rights. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash premierebasics or just Click the link down below. And now let's go to level two, a dynamic screen recording. All right, so here's a piece of Premiere screen recording. First, find the crop effect in the effect browser and drag it on your clip. Then with that clip selected, go to the effect controls and select the crop effect. Now simply crop out a window, in my case, the timeline. Okay, now enable the safe margins. We're doing this because we are going to put the timeline exactly in the middle of the frame. This is needed for the basic 3D effect to work properly. Use the position properties in the effect controls to put the timeline exactly in the middle. All right, now go to the timeline and right click the clip. Choose nest. We're doing this so that the anchor point is exactly in the middle, which is gonna make sure the 3D effect works perfectly. Next, find the basic 3D effect in the effects library and drag it on the nested sequence. Then head over to the effect controls and move the player to the first frame of the clip. Set a position keyframe and a swivel and tilt keyframe. Now first adjust the position to your desired location. I'm also gonna scale it up a little, but I won't animate it. All right, now also adjust the swivel and tilt to your liking. This is gonna give it that 3D look. Next, move the player to the end of the clip and adjust the position, swivel and tilt again to however you like it. Take your time and keep tweaking the properties until you're satisfied. Also, don't forget to ease the keyframes to make the animation super smooth. That looks so cool, but now it's time for level three, a 3D logo hologram. First, you need a clip of a hand. I got mine from Storyblocks, but you can also shoot it yourself. First, 
drag the logo on top of your hand clip. Make sure the logo sits in the middle of the screen. Now, to make it look glitchy, drag a static noise clip on top of it. Again, I got mine from Storyblocks. Now, make sure it's selected and go to the effect controls. In here, set the blending mode to add. This will remove the black parts. All right, now click the pen tool and go to the program monitor. In here, draw a mask around the noise so that it fits inside your logo. Okay, now back in the timeline, select your logo and static noise and right click it. Then choose nest. With the nested sequence selected, head over to the opacity property and set the blending mode to add again. All right, that already looks like something. Next, we're gonna track the logo with our hand. To do that, set the opacity of the logo to zero for now. You'll understand why soon. Grab the playhead and move to the first frame of the clip. Then set a position keyframe. Now head over to the program monitor and find a spot in the palm of your hand that you can easily track. Then in the effect controls, hold down shift plus arrow right to jump five frames forward. Then simply adjust the position. Keep doing that until you're at the end of the clip. By the way, in After Effects, tracking is so much easier. So check out the link in the description because After Effects Basics is back, baby. Okay, so now increase the opacity back to 100. You can now use the scale plus anchor point to adjust your logo and make it fit your frame. All right, your logo is now perfectly tracked to the palm of your hand. Now it's time to add some 3D to it. Find the basic 3D effect and drag it on your nested sequence. Go back to the effects library and find the Gaussian blur effect. Also drag that one on your clip. Then in the effect controls, go to the first frame of your clip. Then click the swivel stopwatch. Now simply move further in time and increase the swivel so that the logo now has two full rotations. Select the keyframes and of course ease them both to make the animation smooth. Next, go to the Gaussian blur effect and set the blurriness to 15. Also set the blur dimensions to horizontal. Very nice. Next, we're gonna hide the logo behind the fingers in front. To do that, duplicate the hand clip on top of the other clips. Make sure it's selected and go to the opacity property. Then go to the first frame and click on the pen tool to create a mask. Head over to the program monitor and draw a mask around the front fingers. Try to be as precise as you possibly can. Now, back in the effect controls, click the mask pad stopwatch icon and click the mask track forward button. Premiere will now track the movement of the fingers so that you don't have to mask out every frame. When you're done, play around with the feather and mask expansion until you're satisfied. That looks so cool. Next, I want to show you these three amazing effects in Premiere Pro. So, so click here to continue the lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.